now from the makers of Cold Water Irma. John Steed, following the vaguest of clues, had called at the offices of Classy Glass Cleaning. A gentleman who called himself Charles Lather was in charge of a training session involving three apprentices. Anti-clockwise, boys, anti-clockwise. Oh, I'm so sorry, Mr. Steve, but your assignment really does sound too small. You know, only one window, and all the others bought it up. Well, I ask you. Oh, it's a pity. I'm only just round the corner from one of your regular clients, uh, the Cypher Headquarters, Ministry of Defence. Cypher Headquarters? Ah, yes, I remember now. A double glaze with moulded frames. Ghastly. But we haven't touched it for months. We gave up the contract. Uneconomical. But if you ever decide to reopen your windows, Mr. Steve, you shall be the first to know. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Steed. Now, boys, left hand from the hip. From the hip, please. Steed left and got into his car. He started it up and pulled away from the building. As he did so, an open van with ladders slung across the back came from the rear of the courtyard. Steed took off down the road. The van followed him. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. Because it gets out the worst dirt and stains, Mrs. Francis of Port Elizabeth found that Omo cleaned her husband's bathing trunks. He used to come home and they'd be marked and splodged with tar and uh, oil from our beaches. Well, he wanted to throw them away, so I said, well, he'd soak them over them up and call them to Omo. And the next day they were sh shimmering heights again. Goldwater Omo cleans best. Over a million South African housewives have proved it. Wall's Ice Cream presents the new Pink Pussycat song. We've got strawberry and vanilla, cloth and honey, that's on inside. White candy chocolate the way you like, all over the outside. We're Wall's Pink Pussycat Song. Oh. Episode 4 of this story, in which John Steed is made to realize that window cleaners can be very dangerous. And Emma Peel almost sees another murder committed in... The Super Secret Cypher Snatch. The department of MI-12 was in a rare panic. They'd lost two men, Jarrett and Peters. Ferret, who was in charge of forensics and very actively involved, had appealed to Mother... Mother had agreed to help, but apart from making a few phone calls and drinking most of John Steed's sherry, he hadn't got very far. He'd put Steed and Mrs. Peel on the case, and they'd followed through on evidence from some photographs of Jarrett's. Peters had been killed by a man posing as a window cleaner. There was a window cleaning van in one of the photographs. Hence, Steed's visit to classy glass cleaning. It had been amusing, but not very helpful. At least, that's what Steed was thinking as he drove away. Jarrett got into the Cypher HQ. Everyone denies that he did. But he did because he took the photographs and we know the date from the calendar on the desk. Now, an attempt was made to destroy the photographs, which shows they must be important. The only clue on the photograph was the window cleaning van. Hmm. Well, perhaps it was just coincidence. Nothing more than coincidence. But in the open van, following at a discreet distance, Maskin and Vickers had other ideas. Yeah, he's still got him up ahead. Yeah, he won't get away. We'll pull up nearer to him once we get out in the country. Dad is all ready. Four of them. Two across the roof. One sticking out the back. One I can use over the side. Right. Let's see what we can do. John Steed was taking his time, driving thoughtfully and leisurely. He hardly noticed the open van until it was almost on him, hogging the road. What the well, pass if you want to pass. Steed gestured irritably to the van to pass. The road was narrow. The van approached and swerved. A steel 
ladder in the body of the van swung out as though by accident. It missed Steve's car by inches. All the crazy lunatics. Oh, wait a minute. Steel ladders. Did I say it might be coincidence? That's a lot. Now, from the back of the van, Vickers, using another longer steel ladder, swung it from side to side, reaching out for Steve's windscreen. Steve braked, swerved, and pulled off the road. The van disappeared round the bend in the road. Steed muttered an oath under his breath that condemned all window cleaners to perdition and started the car again, determined to get to grips, this time on his own terms. And there was no question about not being able to catch them up. The small van couldn't get away, but the road was narrow and twisty. Steed, using all his racing knowledge, soon made progress, and then coming round a sharp bend... There, stretched across steel trestles, were four ladders, their ends pointed like lances. It was like a tank trap, and Steve drove straight into it. <laughs> Mrs. Peel, for her part, had agreed to help out in the latest plan of MI-12, which was to place in Cypher headquarters a fresh agent. Someone who could move in without creating too much attention and keep an eye on things from the inside. Mrs. Peel had been chosen for the task. The danger money was an extra five shillings a day. But Mrs. Peel was not impressed. You're a lot of smoke, if you wish. Thank you. No, I won't. But please, go ahead. I don't seem to have a light. I wonder... Excuse me. Yes, Mr. Webster? Uh, will you come in, please, Mrs. Peel, and bring your book with you? Yes, sir. Excuse me, Mr. Murray. Ah, yes. Uh, good morning. Uh, please take a seat. Thank you. Uh, you have been checked through security, I take it. All your papers are in order. Uh, Mr. Murray has been most thorough. There's no need for the department to go any further checking. I have a triple star clearance. Is this mother's doing? Pardon? Mother. Oh, come, Mrs. Peel. This is Cypher headquarters. We are used to unraveling complicated puzzles. You surely don't think a man like myself is going to accept an outside appointment like yours without checking... Mother has planted you on me, hasn't he? No. Ferret of MI-12, actually. <sighs> I wish they'd get on with their work and leave us to deal with ours. All right, I'll accept the fact that they have trouble and they're trying everything. All right, I won't complain, providing you do your job like everyone else. I have all the qualifications, Mr. Webster. I might be able to do you a bit of good. I promise I won't do any harm. Right. Well, having cleared that away, perhaps you'd be good enough to get me Q file. You'll have to present my signature to Murray. It's top secret. Here. Bring it straight back in here, please. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Webster. With that, Mrs. Peel left the boss's office and found Murray, who was still looking for a light for a cigarette. Mr. Webster wants Q cipher file. Here's his signed authorization. All right. This is the most important part of the whole cipher system. It's automatic, of course. Works on the right combination of buttons. Mrs. Peel took out the correct file and was about to ask Murray to close the machine when she looked out of the window. There, down in the courtyard, was a small van, classy glass cleaners, clearly marked on the side. Mrs. Peel frowned, paused... Two men got out of the van and moved to the back, removing a series of steel ladders from the roof. Hey, come along now, the file. Hmm? Oh, yes, sorry. And Mrs. Peel moved swiftly over to her desk and picked up a telephone. Outside line, please. Thank you. What about that light? Darned if I can find one. Hmm? Oh, there's some matches in my handbag. Just a moment. Here you are. Yeah, thanks. Mrs. Peel listened intently to the phone ringing at the other end. There was no reply. No reply because the number she was ringing was John Steed's car telephone and John Steed was lying beneath it, hardly conscious. Steed picked himself up from the floor of the wrecked car. The car phone had stopped ringing. 
Steed looked around him. His bowler had been torn by the steel ladder that was jutting through the broken windscreen. Steed picked it up shakily and patted the metal casing. Then he reached for the phone and dialed operator. Hello? Hello, operator. Could you get me Lessington? Cipher HQ, please. It's very urgent. Sorry, sir. All the lines are engaged. Uh, well, then use the security line, please. Zero, one, zero. Hello, caller. I'm afraid the security line's out of order. I see. Thank you. Steed thought for a moment and then rang another number. In Mother's apartment, the phone shrilled. Mother speaking. Mark, Steed. Look, how quickly can you get someone round to site the headquarters? Oh, well, I suppose I could give them those dreary people from MI-12. Ferret himself, perhaps. Good. Then send him off there straight away. Right. But what is all this about, Steed? Where are you and what's happened? I can't explain. There really isn't time. But I think someone should get over there at top speed in case Mrs. Peel needs some help. I can't get there quickly enough myself. I'm down in the country and rather tied up with a ladder at the moment. A ladder? Uh, yes, and I have a nasty feeling that the other parts of it are about to be used down at the Cypher HQ. Oh, don't waste any time, Mother. This is an emergency. Bye. Uh, but look here, Steve. I... Uh, really? You fed it? Mother, a job for you, Ferret. Write down your own rabbit warren, too. Get over to Cypher HQ, find Mrs. Peel, and don't walk under any ladders on the way. That's an order. <laughs> Ferret knew Mother in this mood. He didn't argue. He moved. Arriving at the headquarters, he was staggered to find not a soul in the courtyard. No one here. No guards on duty. No one. What the... The devil? The passageways were silent and empty. Ferret, in near panic now, ran the length of the corridor and burst into the office that had been given to Mrs. Peel. She stood by the desk, her hand still on the telephone in its cradle. Her eyes stared sightlessly. Mrs. Peel? Mrs. Peel, are you all right? Mrs. Peel? Mrs. Peel didn't move or acknowledge his presence in the room. Mrs. Peel, what happened? A wet window cleaner's leather dropped over Ferret's face. He struggled for air, but the leather tightened into a shiny brown mask, tighter and tighter, suffocating him. He stopped struggling eventually and sagged to the floor. Dead. Mrs. Peel stood still, frozen, expressionless, looking down at the body. Oh, more washing up. Haven't you tried new sunlight liquid yet? Should I? Yes, because new sunlight liquid gives you real economy. It's proved the most economical dishwasher. One teaspoonful washes a whole sinkful of dishes sunlight clean. Sunlight clean? Right. A fresh, sparkling cleanness you've never known before. Why fresh? That's the lemon juice. And sparkling? Because it's concentrated. New sunlight liquid gives you the greatest grease-cutting power for sparkling dishes every time. They say once an OMA user, always an OMA user. Here's Mrs. Senior from Boggan Tweeny. I've stuck to cold water, Irma, and I'm still using it. It's the strongest washing powder I've used. There's no dirt or stains that can stand up to cold water OMO. The Avengers. Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers. Brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo. The Avengers. Donald Monat as John Steed and Diane Appleby as Emma Peel. Is adapted and directed by Dennis Falbig and produced by David Gooden.